In the case of unanswered prayers, it is basically the perfect breeding ground to underscore the false belief that God doesn't love you, that he doesn't care, that he's not listening. We're going to talk about this today, but first it's spring here on Mountain Homestead and new life is popping up everywhere. Speaking of which, let's take a second to see what's happening around our miracle dream come true homestead. Hi. No, it's not mud. It's a soup? Yeah. Oh, it looks delicious. I know, but you can't eat it. We were made for each other. Oh, I was called Beneath your moon, I was birthed in the mountains under the sun. I make the bestest cinnamon rolls. <laughs> These are the bestest cinnamon rolls, you guys. Hey, I do have them in another video, so I will link to that for you guys below. Or maybe I should rename that video the bestest cinnamon rolls. <laughs> I am so mad. I have gone through probably four can openers in the last two years, and they all break within a couple months of using them. Can you guys please? <laughs> If you know of a good can opener, please recommend it in the comments below. I need a can opener that doesn't fall apart within six months so badly. If you're one of the new subscribers, I want to say welcome to our homeschool, homestead, and homemaking vlog channel, singing a new song. For a super quick micro intro, I'm Shayla, an earthy mountain mama and wife. My husband and I have six children, and we are second generation homeschoolers. We're a big Jesus-loving family, and we love to laugh here at our Mountain Homestead Fixer Upper that we began buying last spring. This video is gonna be all things spring, but I'm gonna address a question that one of my viewers asked me recently. This question is one that shot straight to my heart because it's an area I have extensive experience in, and I have a lot of empathy for people going through this situation. The question was, how do you deal with discouragement when God doesn't answer your prayers, questions, or seems far off? She also asked, what have been some helpful Bible verses to help keep your faith and hope flourishing? So in this video, we're going to do a little spring cleaning, some spring homesteading, and answer this question, and even share some of my favorite cleaners, including some homemade ones. Be sure to look in the description box down below for chapters if you were here for a specific topic, though. All right, so let's talk about this hard question. When I was asked this question, it was literally like a shot straight to my heart, and I have so much experience in this area that I've spent more time wondering if I matter to God than I would like to admit to. In fact, I still struggle with it at times. Yeah, he's always faithful. I've noticed that for a lot of the people that struggle with this, maybe not everybody, but for many it started in childhood. So bad things happened in childhood that our child brains didn't have the ability to process. So we process things the only way we knew how to. And for some of us, we would process things to believe that we were the defective ones. We began believing something must be wrong with us. After all, whatever we went through that was bad wouldn't have happened if we were worthy of love, protection, and care, right? <laughs> I'm going to get a little scientific with you now. Last year I graduated after three years of therapy for PTSD, and one of the things my counselor taught me is that every time your brain makes a new memory or a belief, it makes a little wrinkle. The more times you travel and think that wrinkle, the deeper the wrinkle gets and the stronger the belief comes. Thinking whatever it is becomes automatic. And if you believed something for many years and you learn it's not true, it takes great mental strength and often times more than you to create a new brain pathway. Even if it's a good thing. For example, let's say you just learned that God does love you after all. Your brain and body will tend to forget this even after you've learned the truth. So if you have believed for years and years that you are unworthy of God's love and care, if you've believed he doesn't care about you and that he's not listening, then it's going to take tremendous strength to create a new belief pathway because your brain and body are automatically going to go down that wrong belief pathway without even realizing it. If it is a belief that started in childhood, it can be even more difficult to repave that. Negative thought patterns formed in childhood 
we can tend to go down them and not even think much about it. We don't even realize that other people don't have that belief. Another thing I learned is that without realizing it, we look for proof of what we already believe. So to make things even more complicated, we often unknowingly recreate situations that solidify what we believe, even if what we believe is awful and hurting us. For example, I have a lot of abandonment issues coming from my childhood. And I was unknowingly choosing jobs for years where I dealt with massive rejection. The jobs were doing nothing for my belief that God did care. They were underscoring the faulty belief that I had that I didn't matter to anybody. In the case of unanswered prayers, it is the perfect reading ground to underscore the belief that God is far away, that he doesn't care, that he doesn't love you. I personally am still in my healing journey but here are some things that I've learned that help me and some things that I'm still learning. If you are feeling like God is far away, tell a believer that you trust. Ask him to pray for you. Sometimes speaking these words is all that it takes to break the devil's deception and chains and that lie. There are times I've told somebody that I was feeling that way and it was almost immediate relief. Remember though, that healing is not linear. We have a tendency to recycle things that we've already processed and learned. There's a graphic I saw somewhere and it showed how some people think healing is a straight shot when it's more squiggly up and down and all around and all over the place. And that brings me to the next point. If you are recovering from trauma, be careful who you hang out with. Some people that haven't been through trauma at all in life will make you feel even more broken than you are. Like it's simple to heal. They think it should be a straight shot. These people will make you feel weak and defective, like you're not measuring up, and like, if you just had more Jesus, you'd be past this. Okay, don't hang out with those people. They're not gonna help you. They don't get it. Don't waste your time trying to explain anything to them. You don't need them to understand, and you don't need to explain yourself. If they are judging you for your weakness, for not healing fast enough, whatever, then you don't need them at all, not right now. There are people out there who will understand, so go find them. On the other hand, you don't want to spend too much time around people that are dealing with trauma and not working towards healing. Learn how to recognize when you're going down that dark belief pathway, and it will take time. For example, the belief that God's not listening, that he doesn't care. When you catch yourself thinking that, try to stop yourself. Sometimes it'll be a day where you're weighed down with this and you didn't catch yourself till you're like a day into it, but when you finally do catch yourself going down that dark path, believe in God's far away, that he doesn't care. Combat it with God's word. Look at Bible verses for when God feels far away and for when it feels like he doesn't care. Just Google that. The, find verses that resonate most with you and put them up around your home. Frame them and listen to them. Listen to the Psalms on audio and definitely listen to worship music. So music has the ability to heal. Did you know that? Music opens up pathways in the brain and it allows new beliefs a stronger pathway. Your Love Defends Me, Reckless Love of God, Chris Tomlin's Good Father, those are some of my favorites. At first, verses and the songs may feel a little empty, especially if you have believed you don't matter for a really long time. Remember, we're creating new pathways though and that this is going to take time. It's not overnight. The good news is, is that even if you spend 40 years believing God doesn't care, it's not going to take 40 years to iron out that defective wrinkle. It happens faster. It will take some time and it will take some effort but science says it normally only takes something like three weeks, if I recall correctly. I could be wrong on that. The Bible says that God is enthroned on the praises of his people, though. So play that worship music. On that note, here is something that recently helped me a lot. I found an accountability devotion partner, and I discovered how to do devotions that actually worked for me. I figured out that for myself, it doesn't work to try to set a strict time for devotions. Most of my life devotions didn't work for me because I was trying to do that strict morning time thing and it just wasn't happening in the morning. That never worked for me. I have ADHD and I've got six kids and I homeschool. And for years I had newborns and toddlers around. So I've had to remain a little more flexible. I found that to have those devotions ready to go for when it works best for me. Leave the Bible laying around. Put little Bible books laying around or the devotion books. And I also have the Bible app on my phone. For me, devotions don't need to be very long to be effective. Here's another tip. Hang out with other believers. It might take you a while to find believers that you resonate with, but don't give up. There is strength in numbers. 
Okay, I'm saving the hardest thing to share for last in the matter of unanswered prayers. Okay, so for many years, I had a couple prayers that I prayed. One of them, I'm actually still praying and waiting on, and it's been almost 20 years. <laughs> it's taken me a long time to accept this, but I'm learning that there seem to be two reasons for unanswered prayers. I'm sure there's more reasons, but these are two that I have noticed. I've noticed that almost every time God said no to me, it was because he had something so much better planned. And I was so fixated on that smaller thing and the belief that he must not love me. And so I wasted years discouraged. The other time is because the answer was already in the Bible and I was missing it. All right, when I said we're gonna do a little spring cleaning, I really did mean a little spring cleaning. <laughs> I haven't had time to do a complete, thorough, proper spring cleaning in probably 10 years. That's because for me, homeschooling does take precedence. There are a few things that I do like to and actually need to do every spring though, because our family does suffer from some allergies. Not everybody in the family, just myself and one of my children in particular. So I have to keep on top of the dust to a certain extent and a lot of the spring cleaning that I'll be doing in this video is going to be revolving around allergy control, I guess you could say. Not all of it, but a good portion of it is going to be. Obviously, I have some plants to repot here. Some of them are really suffering. They need to be in a bigger pot, and so I'm going to get to a little bit of that in this video. I love these little Swedish dishcloths. They work very well. They are nice to replace paper towels and save money so you're not going through so many paper towels. These are neat because you can actually disinfect them in the microwave, believe it or not. You just pop them in there for a minute or so and pull them out and they're disinfected and you can continue using them. During a spring cleaning, I like to wash all of the bedding, the comforters that we've been using all winter, the blankets, we wash them throughout the winter as well, but I like to make sure that I go through all of the blankets and especially those down comforters, especially in the springtime because of all the pollens and allergens in the air. I don't have a clothesline. I wish I did because I love, absolutely love the smell of line dried sheets. Did you know there's people out there that actually don't like the smell of line dried sheets? I just think that's so strange because to me it's one of the nicest smells. As I was changing the sheets, I noticed the fan really needed to be washed. <laughs> so that is something that's going on the spring cleaning list. Get rid of that dust and lint that's up there. I put a sheet down so that it protects the floor and everything that I just washed and I'm just gonna go to town getting this fan cleaned off. I love these little hand gloves. They're dusting hand gloves. I will link to these in the comments below or in the description box below. This is a little e-cloth glove and it, it works amazingly. It picks up so much dust. It makes super speedy work of any dusting job, any really dirty jobs. It even cleans fans off. I Maybe you saw it in one of my last videos. I cleaned a desktop fan, the grill of it off, and it did a marvelous job. You can use them on mirrors and windows that aren't necessarily needing to be washed, but are just simply dusty. And it cleans for miles. As you can see, I have dusted so many things in this room, even my camera, <laughs> with just this little glove. Okay, now I'm down in the schoolroom. And in the schoolroom, because of all the books, I find that the Swiffer works really well because you can slide it in on top of the books. Here we have a homeschool day that we obviously didn't pick up after ourselves right after. So I am tidying this room up right now and getting that done. It never ceases to amaze me how much of a mess we can make when we are homeschooling. You can see this room is not finished. We still have so much work to do. We've got the door to trim. We need to paint behind the walls still. So much work still left to do, but it's coming along. None of my kids seem to know how to file books. They always just kind of plop them in there. So I am cleaning that space out for them.
All right, this kitchen brush, you guys. For general cleaning, this kitchen brush is one of my favorite things. It makes such speedy work of everything that it touches to clean. I love it. Uh, this is my second one that I've bought. Okay, this is my kitchen descaler. I use it not just in the kitchen, but in the bathrooms, all of the tubs, the sinks. It just descales everything within a couple short minutes. It is literally just two ingredients. Do you ever forget to clean your vacuum cleaners, filters? I do from time to time. And I try to remember to do it probably at least twice a year, but it's not enough, obviously. <laughs> Look how filthy these things were. When it comes to allergy control, I find that the big surfaces like walls, floors, ceiling, all of those things are fairly easy to clean with just, you know, like one swoop of a floor sweeper. And we don't realize it, but a lot of allergens settle onto those surfaces, all those surfaces, and it doesn't take a lot to get them clean. But when you do, it takes down a lot of the allergens that have settled on them. Pollens also get caught on screens, so it's important to wash your screens as well because they can continue to make you sick throughout the year if you don't wash them very often. Like every time you open the window, you think about it, the air blows in and the pollens get kind of blown around into the air again. Curtains are another thing that I like to keep super clean and wash from time to time because they trap all kinds of spores and pollens. So washing them can also cut down on allergies. I love this soap dispenser I got, it makes it easy. I have scriptures all over my house like this <laughs> to keep me reminded of God's faithfulness and keep my spirits higher. It's time to tackle the pantry. This hasn't been cleaned out since my aunt was here last summer. So this pantry badly, badly, badly needs to be organized. I mean, look at it. I'm going to tackle this today, but it's going to be a big project. It's gonna take me a full day just working on this after the kids' school. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pulling everything out and I'm categorizing everything. My aunt taught me to do that when it comes to organizing and it's something that I thought was really smart. So basically put all of the canned goods that are related in one stash, pasta in another stash. I'm taking a break. <laughs> I have to take lots of breaks when I do this. And here in this scene, I'm texting my husband. We're texting back and forth. We've been trying to do that more often. It's good for your marriage to send love notes to each other. In order to do a very good job, I have to walk away. <laughs> every 10 minutes to 15 minutes or so. Otherwise, I just don't do as well of a job as I could have done because I do get overwhelmed quickly. It's just all, I guess, part of living with ADHD. I guess that's why I get that way. Like my aunt doesn't have, and she can just tackle this whole thing at once and she can work on it for like two hours at a time and not miss a beat. I'm not that way though. I guess it's like one of my stepdads always used to say though, takes all kind to make the world go around. <laughs> it's much better, we have sections now. Here we have the Mexican food section and down here we have soups and broths. Down here we have salad stuff and just canned beans, tomatoes and condiments. We have snack foods down here. Up here I have olive oils and a few more condiments that didn't fit in the other spot because they're taller bottles. And then we have pastas. I have canned fruits, canned milk, sugars, syrups. And down here we have all the spices. I have baking goods down here, like all kinds of different flours. And then I've got some little buckets with just random things in them. And down on the bottom we have buckets of flour and gallons of things. <laughs> These filters are clean, they dried out. I love to put a drop of lavender essential oil on top of the bottom filter. You guys, it makes such a nice clean smell and it's just invigorating, I love it. it makes the whole house smell so much better when you're vacuuming and you can use probably any essential oil that you want. One of my favorites for this purpose is lavender. I've always been fond of shark vacuums. This shark vacuum is the first one that I bought at Walmart. I've bought them from other places and I don't like this shark vacuum. It's clunky 
it does not work as well it's kind of hard to get the hose out so i don't know i mean i hope shark is not declining in their quality this one just doesn't seem as high quality as the ones i've had in the past though I am getting so antsy to get out there and start gardening. It's soon guys, really soon. We've got this garden tilled, we got the soil testing sent off. Back to cleaning. This is the first time I've had a junk drawer. I think in my marriage, we never had a house big enough that I could dedicate a drawer to a junk drawer. So I'm cleaning this drawer out right now. And um, it's a very small junk drawer. We don't need a very big one because I have, you know, purposeful places for most things. And my kids, look, they brought me, <laughs> they brought me some flowers while I was cleaning the junk drawer. Pretty. Let's put them in water cups. We also found the blue flowers and dandelions. Anyways, we did make a mess of this junk drawer fairly quickly, so it is definitely time to clean it out and organize it and be a little bit more intentional with how we use it, <laughs> if we can be. It's funny how much space you have in certain areas that you didn't realize you had simply because the space was disorganized. Here's another thing I like to do every spring and every fall, if I can, I like to clean the carpets and the upholstery. So this is one of my favorite home cleaning appliances. I love having a floor upholstery cleaner and carpet cleaner on hand. They're so useful, especially when you have a lot of kids. Anyways, I'm shocked at how much brighter the carpet is. We've only had this carpet for a few months. We got it over Thanksgiving and it's so much brighter after cleaning it. I didn't realize how dingy it had gotten in just a few short months until I cleaned it. Look at that water. Oh my gosh, isn't that gross? So now the sofa's next. Clearly it needs a cleaning badly. I am really glad that I bought the upholstery carpet cleaner combo because I have used this thing so many times since I bought it. I've only had it for a year and a half, but I've used it so many times. So whenever a kid is sick and throws up all over the carpet or the dog comes in and is muddy or if like when we had our puppy when it was having all the accidents, this thing just, it really came in handy. I talked a second ago about how large areas of real estate in your home can collect dust, pollen, allergens, spores, that kind of a thing. So one of the great ways you can go through your home and clean it and get rid of some of the allergens is just by sweeping off the walls and the ceilings. Here's a fun little trick. Essential oil bottles, when they're empty, save them up. Simply put them in a little jar of water like I've got here and it will help get the rest of the essential oil out of the lids and out of the stopper and out of the jar and then you will have a nice little unique scent you can also use it for cleaning if you want. Something I do want to say, never use essential oils when you're cleaning your carpets and your sofa because the essential oils can damage your upholstery and carpet cleaner. Moving on to planting, I love my house plants. At one point, maybe you saw the video, I will link to it. I had <laughs> I had over 65 house plants. I don't have that many anymore. Some of them were casualties, but I do still have a quite a few. I love the whole jungle vibe and bringing the outdoors in. This plant badly needed to be repotted. It was quite root bound and starting to suffer. I love this little whisk broom and I learned to get a metal dustpan because my kids kept breaking dustpans. They're outside playing with bugs. They drive me nuts. I've got this one kid in particular. He's always got bugs. More sweeping off the ceilings. Okay, that robot vacuum, you guys, seriously, hands down, best investment. This thing works really well and it keeps the floors so clean. In this next scene, I am cleaning my cutting board. Look how dirty that is. I use peroxide to clean them and then when it's all dried off, I use mineral oil to coat them and condition them. My husband said not to use anything else. He is a woodworker 
and a carpenter and he said not to use anything else because all other oils can go rancid the only one that does not is mineral oil and i know that there is some debate on this because some say there is some information saying the mineral oil is not healthy i'm also using this time as an opportunity to wash my rings i like to keep them nice and clean you guys probably notice in my videos <laughs> i like rings i i like jewelry It's easy to forget that the air purifier cleans the air, but that the air purifier also needs to be cleaned. I use a vacuum for this and I like to vacuum it off. It helps prolong the filters. And of course it helps keep the air much more clean. And I like to put essential oils on the inside filter when I'm cleaning it. And it helps to just make the house smell really good. I'm debating whether or not to polish this stove <laughs> and I decided I'm going to go ahead and do it. I've been wanting to do it since we moved in, so for a year now. I've got this, it's Miko's Red Devil Black Stove Polish. It's supposed to be non-toxic, water-based. I'm a little nervous, but we're going to do this. It said I'm supposed to use lacquer to clean the stove off first and I am not going to do that. I'm going to use one of my Norwex cloths and I'm going to clean all the grease off the stove with that and just some good old dish soap. And it seemed to work very well. So I've got it all clean now and I'm going to do the polishing. If you are following me a year ago, you know that this stove is a really big deal to me. I really love this stove and I'm so grateful that the lady that is selling the home to us let us keep this stove. To close this video, I need to say that the last time I posted, a couple weeks ago, I barely had 6,000 followers. Today, I have over 10,000. You guys, it used to take me a month to get 100 subscribers and around a year to get 1,000, and I've been getting around 300 to 1,000 a day lately. This channel is exploding. Oh my gosh, you guys, I worked so hard on this channel for so long. And over the new year, I was so depleted and disappointed that I decided to cut back. My heart felt broken. I felt like I wasn't able to provide enough value despite my best efforts to all of you. I felt like I wasted money and hard work. Now I know that God was just waiting in, on some things. And one of them was he was waiting for me to get a better grasp on the final piece of the puzzle of learning self-care. Guys, I can't thank you guys enough for all the views, the likes, the heartfelt comments and support. Some of you are even using the super thanks button, which I seriously, I can't express my gratitude enough. Thank you. I am so incredibly shocked and humbled and elated. Thank you to everybody for being here and supporting this channel. I'm gonna do my best to continue bringing you value and content that glorifies God and recharges the depleted. Not every video is gonna be as heavy as this one, you guys. I will be including uplifting devotionals in all of my videos from here on out, though. You guys, see you next time.